Hello fellow humans. Well, we finally made it. After four days, we have elected a president, President-elect Joe Biden. And although we have a current president who is not going to hand this over graciously, is not going to write a concession speech, he's probably not even going to write a note to Joe Biden, certainly not going to be an inauguration. In spite of all that, Joe Biden will take office on January 20th. We do know, as he's already started, Donald Trump will attempt to employ any resource at his disposal to try to nullify the results of this election, try to make it look like a fraud. But again, it's okay. The system will work. And whether Trump decides to be a part of the process or not, he will be out of a job on January 20th. Now, as others have said, and as I've said many times in the past, Joe Biden is not the solution to our problems, not by himself. But as I've also said, we needed to cap the well, and it would appear that we've done that, or at least we finally have a firm date for it. So while I acknowledge that the problems are not finished, not by a long shot, They're not going to be solved within the realm of a Biden presidency. While I realize that, I'm choosing to enjoy this moment right now, for this moment. But it is just a moment. I made some observations this week. I have a few things that I've been thinking about, a few thoughts of feelings that I've had and some realizations that I wanted to share. What we all saw. I saw a president declare victory when victory had not been achieved. I saw a president claim fraud on humans' votes, on citizens' votes, valid, legal votes. We remember the last months. Donald Trump has established time and time again He has implored his base to not vote by mail. He's called the process a sham. He's sown seeds of doubt in the Postal Service. And he has told his base to vote in person. He set that precedent. So when we saw the way this week played out, there was no surprise. It was extremely predictable. When I did my live video the night before the election, I mentioned that I had a prediction for the outcome. Uh, And that I, because of the length of the video more than anything, and uh, superstitious fears of perhaps jinxing the the result, I didn't share it, but I did leave it open uh, to the comment section. But fortunately, nobody, nobody asked me what that was. My prediction was exactly what happened. I want to clarify, I am not in any way trying to brag or claim omnipotence uh, on this. It was extremely predictable. I predicted that because of the precedent that Trump had already set, that the majority of in-person voting would weigh towards his base and that the mail-in voting, the early voting, would weigh towards Biden. And it makes sense. You know, his whole MO has been to downplay the virus, to act like social distancing, mask wearing, all that is, it's not important. And Joe Biden has been the opposite. So it would make perfect sense that his base would come and vote in person the day of. That's what I predicted would happen. I predicted that the early results would skew towards Trump's favor and that as the mail-in votes got counted later in the day, that Biden would come back around the other way. I really want to stress this point because it's important to me because, as I've said before, like in regards to the Iraq war, for example, I don't consider myself particularly smart or a genius by any stretch. 
this was just obvious. This was an obvious outcome that it would play out this way. The one, the one place where I will acknowledge that I was wrong was that I thought that Biden would smack down Trump. I thought it would be a landslide. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. But essentially, the line of events happened the way I expected it to. So when Donald Trump calls out the late votes as some kind of indication of fraud, particularly because it changed the course of the votes, it changed the lead, it's unfortunate that his base would still be susceptible to eating that up in light of the facts, the fact that he set that standard. He set up the standard for it to play out that way. And the way it played out was exactly the way that we all expected. You know, what Trump did was deplorable. When he came out the next day, on Wednesday, and he claimed voter fraud, he called all those outstanding ballots that were being counted as false. That's an unforgivable, irredeemable action for the president to take. Particularly when you are in a position of power and you were the one running for that position. For you to come out and say that is unforgivable. But I'm not even really wanting to talk about that. I, as I've said, it's what we would expect from Trump. This is the character that he's established. I want to talk about his supporters. On Tuesday, I went to bed depressed. I thought that Biden was going to lose. And I say that having already said that it basically worked out the way I predicted, which was that Biden would come back. However, the news outlets were not making it particularly clear where the numbers were coming from and what weight of the numbers were mail-in versus in-person voting. And because of that, I thought that they were getting a fairly even distribution of both because they were calling so many states. And a lot of the states they were calling were going towards Trump. And the projections in the states that they hadn't called yet, particularly Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Arizona, to a lesser extent, were going towards Trump. But they were too early to call. Now, I didn't realize at the time that those states were going to have mail-in ballots that were going to be getting counted later. And that was why the states weren't being called. But because there was a discrepancy between certain states and how they were counting the ballots and when, I didn't realize that there was that, that, that tangible, uh, intangible factor. So I went to bed uh, expecting the worst. I woke up uh, pleasantly surprised to find that, indeed, the tides had changed a bit overnight. That part is extremely easy to understand why that would happen for what I already said. The president set that standard. In spite of that, they just ate that up. They just ate up the idea that these votes were being manufactured with no evidence at all. At all. Nothing. And that's what they've demonstrated over the years, is that they don't require it. You just need your dear leader to tell you what to think, to tell you what happened, to tell you the truth, and you just eat it up. And if you can sit there and support this man and defend him after he comes out on a national level, a national stage, in a position of power and influence and lies to you, right to your face, calls your vote illegal. I don't have time for that anymore. I have, I have no interest in 
trying to bring any kind of sense to you. You've just, you have no credibility. You have no morals. You have no principles. Your president, he has no principles. He will say and do whatever he needs to say in a given moment, even if he contradicts himself within the same sentence. He's asking, demanding the count to stop in states that he is ahead, and he has asked to continue the count, like in Arizona, in states where he's behind. He's not even trying to hide his contradiction because he knows he doesn't, he doesn't need to. His base has established that they don't require it. And that's my big takeaway from this week, more than anything, is that there's no excuse, there's no defense to supporting this man. And if you do, and if I know what you believe, I'm not going to listen to anything from you ever again. I don't want to hear about how I shouldn't believe everything that I see online, or how I'm a libtard, or a commie, or a sheep, because I listen to people in science. I don't want to hear any of that. I have no time for it. I have no interest in trying to educate you either on what you should have known yourself. You make your choice to believe a con artist. That's what he is. He is a con artist. He has scammed you. You are the biggest sucker in the world for supporting that man because he would throw you in the flames if it helped himself just like he would for his own children. Same children who are lying for him right now, also claiming fraud. Whatever happens after this year, whatever Joe Biden is able to do, whatever kind of healing or patching of the wound, capping of the well, whatever you want to call it, He's not going to be a savior. You know, we've, we've established that. But whatever happens, however it works out, I can rest easy at night knowing that I didn't sell out. I didn't sell out my morals. I didn't sell out my principles. Was Biden my ideal candidate? No, not by a long shot. I was not enthusiastic to vote for him. And in a different situation, I might have sat this one out. The stakes were just too high. Even in California. Even in California, where they called, the, they called California for Joe Biden the minute that the polls closed here in this state. Kind of a good indicator of the flaws of the Electoral College, really, if you ask me. If you're a Trump supporter in particular, and you vote for Trump in this state... You're, I mean, you're just being told that your vote is meaningless. That's a topic for another conversation. But my point is, I can rest easy knowing that I didn't sell anything out. I didn't sell out my principles. I don't support a man who has no respect for the law, for the truth, for any kind of standard at all. Someone who will say and do whatever he needs to do in a given moment. It is disappointing that Trump was able to get as many voters as he did. I, I am trying to look at it in a positive light. The most positive part of it is that he will not be president anymore on January 20th. Um, I was expecting more of a one-sided victory. On the other hand, Joe Biden pulled in the most votes of any president in history. And he's going to win by a wider margin in the national vote than any president in history. That's, that's not nothing. We had extremely high turnout. And a lot of people turned out to vote for Trump. A lot. And that's troubling. Because there's another Trump out there 
who's smart, who actually knows how to be a leader and how to get the things that he wants done, done. There's somebody out there like that. You know, I, I've, I've seen a lot of the uh, Wicked Witch memes and videos today. The Wicked Witch is dead. But in The Wizard of Oz, the worst witch came along very shortly after the Wicked Witch was killed. So as others have said, we may have capped the well, but we have a lot of work to do. We've capped the well, but uh, now it's time to clean the beaches. I, um, I hope to reconnect with some of you uh, in the community. I think that uh, there's something to be said for local politics, local governance, creating things within your town, trying to make lives better for people around you. I think that's a good place to start. So I hope to connect with more of you, maybe meet at the table. Um, I just don't want, uh, I don't want to be lectured by anybody and I'm not going to listen to it anymore. So I do hope that you find your way back to a place of morality, a place of some kind of standard, of an ideal. Even if it's not something I agree with, at least have it be something, something real, something that you actually believe in. Not that you would defend the erratic, childish behavior of one person while condemning it when it comes from somebody else. Because I certainly have been open about my criticisms of Joe Biden, of Barack Obama, of Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton in the past. I can't give any time or credibility to somebody who can't do that. I just don't have time. We don't have time. We've capped the well. We've got to go clean the beaches. And um, I'm going to choose to enjoy this moment. But we have to remember that this threat is not over. And it's going to come back worse next time.